Here is a list of people you should not currently want to be, a Russian sausage tycoon, a Russian gas industry executive, the editor-in-chief of a Russian tabloid, a Russian shipyard director, the head of a Russian ski resort, a Russian aviation official, or a Russian rail magnate. Anyone answering to such a description probably ought not stand near open windows, in almost any country, on almost every continent. Some two dozen notable Russians have died in 2022 in mysterious ways, some gruesomely. To reiterate, all of these deaths occurred this year alone. One could argue that, given Russia's exceptionally low life expectancy and unchecked rate of alcoholism, at least some of these fatalities were natural or accidental. Just because you're Russian doesn't mean you can't accidentally fall out of an upper story window. Sometimes, people kill themselves. After all, this is what the Kremlin does. Suicides are more difficult to decipher. For oligarchs who have failed to show sufficient loyalty to Putin, Koch's suicide is not an implausible scenario. It is not uncommon to be told, we can come to you or you can do the manly thing and commit suicide, take yourself off the chess board. At least you'll have the agency of your own undoing. In the Kremlin's gothic murderverse, imagination is key. Defenestration, death by throwing someone out of a window from a great height has been a favorite method of removing political opponents since the early days of multi-story buildings, but in the modern era, Russia has monopolized the practice. In Russian, this business of assassination is known as mokroi delo, or wet work. Sometimes, the main purpose is to send a message to others, we'll kill you and your family if you're disloyal. Sometimes, the goal is to simply remove a troublesome individual. Poisoning has ambiguity. It is literally covert, concealed, sometimes hard to detect. Defenestration, the act of throwing someone from a window, is a bit less ambiguous. Yes, it could be an accident. But it's a lot easier to conclude it was murder, an overt assassination. Things that mimic natural causes of death like a heart attack or a stroke, the Russians can be quite good at doing that. The deaths range in their showiness, but they're all part of the same overarching scheme, to perpetuate the idea that the Russian state is a deadly, all-powerful octopus, whose slimy tentacles can search out and seize any dissident, anywhere. As the Bond franchise had it, the world is not enough. The war in Ukraine is not universally popular among Russia's ruling elite. Since the conflict began, sanctions on oligarchs and businessmen have stymied their lifestyles. Some are, understandably, said to be unhappy about this. High-level Russian elites feel as if Putin has essentially wound the clock backwards to the bad old days of Cold War isolation. This year's spate of deaths, so brazen in their number and method as to suggest a lack of concern about plausible, or even implausible, deniability, is quite possibly Putin's way of warning Russia's elites that he is that deadly octopus. The point of eliminating critics, after all, isn't necessarily to eliminate criticism. It is to remind the critics, with as much flair as possible, what the price of voicing that criticism can be.